last round of the Chess Olympiad 2024 Israel against Turkmenistan. Hello everyone and welcome back! How are you today? My name is Nitzan Steinberg, I'm Chess Grandmaster from Israel and I'm a little bit unhappy because today it will be our last videos about the Olympiad 2024 chess series but of course I will be here with you so don't go anywhere my dear friends today we will be watching the final round of Team Israel against Turkmenistan at the 2024 chess Olympiad in Hungary unfortunately until now things haven't been going too well for us so but let's hope let's hope we managed to bounce back in the final round and finish strong as we can so let's get started you know with the white pieces grandmaster maxim rochten the only one that until now is doing his best and is playing just unbelievable in the first board of the national team let's see if he's doing it another time not the three not f6 he's playing against the international master from Turkmenistan, Saparmirat Atabayev. Yes. Let's see. Knight of 3, Knight of 6, G3, D5, Bishop G2, Bishop G4. And now Kassa, Knight BD7, and D3. Maxim is playing the King's Indian defense with the white pieces. E5, H3, Bishop takes F3. Interesting solution by Black. I thought maybe he will play the move Bishop H5 or Bishop F5. But Bishop F3 is looking like, I don't know really good because we have two bishops already in the seventh move in the game so c6 e4 was played by max d takes d takes and now knight c5 queen e2 of course we will not be happy to uh, exchange these queens right so queen e2 and also to provide the square for this rook queen d7 of course attacking the pawn on uh, h3 bishop g2 and now knight e6 was played he wants to bring him to d4 why is playing the move rook d1 i thought maybe to play just c3 no prophylactic move and that's it uh, but let's see rook d1 also played 94 and now queen f1 castle long castle here i'm not sure what uh, max thought about queen c7 because the pawn on c2 is under attack and it seems that only queen c4 this is a good move right because knight f3 just bishop takes a3 and taking this pawn so I don't know uh, so queen c4 is the only move here or maybe queen d3 but I, i'm not sure i like it for white so yeah he played the move long castle with a point of 90 to check this is the threat so max played the move rook d2 also uh, guarding the pawn on c2 and also c3 queen c7 and now c3 90 6 rook takes queen takes and knight d2 very strong you just wants to de develop this knight to c4 attacking the pawn on e5 maybe bishop uh, maybe b4 with the bishop e3 a4 attacking this king on c8 h5 was played you know uh, h4 this is the threat knight f3 was played uh, with the white pieces attacking the pawn and also looking for the h4 uh, square queen c7 now queen e2 i all I, I really can tell you that I thought about before because also you you're not uh, bringing the opportunity to play bishop c5 with black pieces um, and also you're playing a4 a5 bishop b3 you are attacking here you know this king on c8 is not feeling so good and also the bishop on f8 I'm not sure where he will be developed so b4 maybe was a better option queen e2 uh, you know after b4 uh, the point is after knight xc4 that we're just doing queen e1 attacking the knight and also the pawn on e5 so this position you know f5 knight h4 this one this one this one so many things here so looking very strong queen e2 also makes sense you're just uh, grabbing this pawn on e4 and uh, def defend it bishop c5 and i beat no bishop now b4 of course sorry bishop b6 and now bishop d2 i thought about a4 i'm not sure why max didn't play it a5 a6 this is the threat and now black should have played the move a6 or a5 right so yeah it's looking like a4 is, is a good move for us maybe max thought about a5 and didn't like it because black will try to play here c takes and id4 and you know this square is important of course but i don't know maybe takes takes and bishop somewhere queen c2 maybe bishop d2 also makes sense bishop b2 because you know rook b1 and this file not so easy knight d2 knight c4 
I, I have a feeling that this king on c8 is not so good placed. So let's see. Bishop d2 was played, rook d8, and now h4, and knight g4, and I'm not sure about it. You know, this knight is very strong here. I'm not sure about the h4 move. Maybe a4 here also. And we rook b1, something ar around this, uh, um, you know, ideas. Bishop e1, knight e2, knight c4. But let's see. B h4 was played, knight g4, now bishop e1, of course, uh, just defend the pawn on f2, queen d6, bishop h3, g6, and now a4, this is the move, a6, and now rook a2 was played, I, I, ca I can't understand this move, rook d2, this is the, the thing here, queen d3, king g2, uh, f6, you know, some maneuvering here, knight h2, I like it, f5, uh, rook d2, <coughs> Queen b1 just takes, takes, and now takes on f5, takes, and bishop takes g4. And this position is really great for white. One pawn up, h5 pawn is weak, and this king on c8 is not so good. You know, our piece is also not in his best, but knight f1, knight d2, the knight will come very fast. Bishop c7, queen e2, and now just f3 was played uh, to bring this knight coming back. Maxim Rochin with 6 minutes on this clock is just doing amazing, you know. Maxim Rochin in his best, ladies and gentlemen. Takes, takes, queen b3, knight g5, takes, takes. You know, this is a kind of positions that Mag Max is doing perfect. Uh, Bishop b6, the 41 move here, takes, takes. And this position is totally, totally winning for white. Slowly, slowly improving and this pawn is going forward. Queen c5 and Maxim Rochten brings another very important win. In the last round of the Chess 2024 Olympiad, it just, you know, unbelievable. Uh, Maxim Rochten in the first board with 7.5 out of 10, I think. Just amazing performance by Maxim. And I hope uh, for the best for him. He's a very good person and, of course, very good friend. So I congratulate you in, in a just fantastic performance in this Olympiad. And I hope for, for the best uh, in the next Olympiad for you, Max. So let's go for the second board. We have Grandmaster Ido Gorosten with the black pieces against Grandmaster Meilis Anaberediv. Yes. E4, C6. Ido Gorstein with his Karo Khan as we know him and he's very very strong at it. So d4, d5, knight c3, takes, takes, knight f6. And of course bishop f5 is also a move as you already know. Here, here, h6, knight f3, knight e7, bishop d3 there is a move. Also h5 immediately and after it bishop d3. Uh, so many, so much theory. If you like to to learn it uh, for white or with the black, it's it's really interesting Be because you can learn there are so much things about positional uh, understanding. So it's it's nice because the Karo Khan is very understanding and positional, um, you know, uh, opening. Knight f6, a takes, c3, bishop d6. We saw the last game that he played playing uh, this particular position with the black pieces. So let's see. Bishop d3, castle, queen c2, rook e8, and h6. Also another interesting move here is to play the move h5. But he is playing the move h6. Castle, knight e7, uh, develops. And I think this position also, maybe in this, yeah, maybe it was, right, yeah. This position was uh, in the last uh, round also after rook e2, as we already learned. Queen takes, bishop takes, and queen e4 with double threat here. So yeah, knight f8 was played by Ido. Bishop g3, bishop e6, knight f4, takes, takes, queen d7. Uh, you know, two bishops for white, but you know, Ido is very uh, good at such pos positions. f5, knight g6, rook is coming, c5 maybe. Everything is under control here. h3, knight g6, just bring this pawn, and you know what? I think that maybe it was just a brilliant move by, by Dogorstein. You know, after a loss, uh, and he's, he's playing very softly. He's playing very good, uh, very calm. And IG6 is like, you know, um, not someone that wants to win this game. And I, I really like this, this move. This, for me, uh, you know, it's a brilliant move. Because in the psychological issues, after you're losing the last game and you're not in your, your best shape in this tournament, you're doing like knight g6, he's telling, you know, maybe this guy um, will be, you know, like uh, a very strong player, you know, like maybe 2700 uh, in the next future because because he's understanding that chess is not like you must win, you after a lose, no, I, ca I, can't, I must come back. No, it's not like this, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important to understand that psychological issues is, is maybe, uh, you know, um, almost everything in chess. So 
and IG6, I, I really, really appreciate such moves because you're just giving up a pawn, but now you're very uh, in equal position. Queen G3, King H8, I like this. I really like it. B3, B5, and now A5 with A4. You know, just amazing. This position, it's a totally draw. And Ido is doing here, you know, like a masterpiece how you're doing a, a draw when you're, you know, when, when you're upset, when you really want to win. But, but this is not sport. You need to understand that this is not sport. You need to do a draw. If, it's draw, if the, the position is, is telling you you need to do, to do a draw, do a draw, okay? So this is something uh, you really can learn from Ido Gorstein in this game. Uh, and I can tell you that after this draw, I promise, I promise you that he will come back much more stronger uh, than ever. So congratulations, Ido, in your first time in the national Israeli team. And uh, I, I hope in the next future you will do a much better uh, result. And uh, I, I know you, you, will, you will do it. So great, Ido, let's come back. So Tamir Navati with the white pieces against um, Atahan Humodov. Let's see it. D4, Knight, F6, C4, G6. And we have the King's Indian defense uh, with the black pieces. D6, H4. Tamir Navati really wants to put checkmate here. H5, Knight, F3, C5, D5, E6, and I, G5. And as you can see, Tamir is playing with his hand. He don't think at all. E takes d5, c takes d5, a6, a4, of course, knight bd7, and now castle. Also f4 immediately, very interesting move, because you really don't want to allow knight d5. Uh, so f4 with some, I don't know, bishop e3, queen d2, uh, maybe g4 in some ways with h5, so really tempting for white, but he, he played a move, uh, castle, rook e8, f4 now, knight f8, and now f5. Very strong move by, uh, by Tamir, is going... All in here, knight uh, uh, six, of course, d7, bishop f4, knight e5, and now queen d2, bishop d7, rook f2 uh, is bringing the other rook into the game, and b5 was played. And here was a, a, a really interesting tactic for white, and it's not so easy to, to look, uh, you know, to see such move, but knight e1 was a mistake. Bishop takes e5, just winning absolutely, because after bishop takes, Knight takes f7, a, a brilliant uh, sacrifice. King takes f7 and now f6. You know, also f takes g6 was interesting for me in my in, in the first time that I saw this position because I thought like maybe king g8, queen h6, and with the threat of rook f8 with queen h7 check, but checkmate of course, but now bishop d4. Very strong move, and there is nothing here because this rook cannot go anywhere uh, because of this pin. So yeah, so f6 here, not f takes g6, and the point behind f6 that you are bringing the queen to h6 with queen g7, and black doesn't have anything to do, um, and that's it. Also, this king cannot go because, you know, f7 will come, so brilliant. Knight e1 uh, was played by Tamir, knight h7, knight takes, king takes, and now bishop g5, queen b6, and now a5, queen c7, and now knight e3 was played. Also, interesting move here was to play g4 immediately with some ideas of h takes. We are playing just f6 maybe, and h5, I don't know, bishop f8, and h5. With rook h2, and, you know, it's looking like very, very bad situation for this king. Uh, for example, I can show you rook h2. I don't know, king g6 is very terrible because I thought bishop h4, no, bishop h6, four, sorry. Maybe rook f5 here. Rook f5. Yeah, with some rook h5 checks, uh, sacrifices, of course, yeah. So I don't know, It's it's g4 was an interesting move to play, but knight e3 also makes sense because you really want to 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 prepare the move g4. But now rook ac8 and g4 and c3. And this position is not so easy because the queen is coming back to c3 and, you know, this is a counterplay for, for black. B takes c3, queen takes c3, takes takes, f takes, f takes, and now g takes h5, bishop h3, attacking this rook. You are playing move knight g2, and this was the mistake. After h takes g6, it's not so easy, because after knight takes, you are just going to d1, and after rook takes e4, there is some problems with bishop d3 and this diagonal with h5, right? So, yeah, it's not so easy here. I think h takes g6 was a better option. Knight g2 is a little bit... A passive move here, uh, g takes h5, bishop takes, also this one looking good for, for white, but unfortunately this b2, uh, b pawn of course is very strong, and also you can see this knight is just unbelievable here. Rook g8 was played, king h2, and now bishop g4, and this is a bad thing here. Attacking this bishop, also rook h3, also knight f3, you know, 
Yeah, Tamir Nabati is losing. Bishop f7, check. Knight f3, rook takes, bishop takes. Bishop takes g8, king takes, and now just bishop d4. e5 takes, d6, bishop c6, going back. King f1, and that's it. Taking it, and rook d3, attacking this pawn, and b2 pawn is running. Tamir Nabati is losing this game. Unfortunately, so the result until now is one and a half against one and a half. Let's go for the last board. We have Ilya Smirin. But before we are seeing this game, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe my channel. But we have something to say about Tamir Nabati. Tamir Nabati is is a you know he's a heart. He's a very strong player. He's playing for the national team so much years. And you know, there is some some mistakes like this one. But overall, he's one of the best players in Israel. Uh, I can tell you that, you know, I, I'm a fan of this guy. He's amazing. Uh, but but I hope for him for the best in the next uh, Olympiad and in, in his next tournaments um, in the European Chess Championship. You know, he's, he's very strong. He qualified uh, several times in the World Cup. So, you know, Tamir Nabati um, needs to be uh, one of the best here in Israel. So thank you for, for playing in our national team and I hope you for the best. And of course, uh, you are a good friend and uh, let's go Tamir. Everything is fine. We are behind you. So let's go for the last uh, board. We have Grandmaster Ilyas Mirin uh, against uh, Alayar Shirilev. Yeah, let's see it. So E4, C5, Knight, C3, E6 and he's going for this opening. And some, somewhere like Sicilian with Khan with D6, I don't know. Bishop d3, knight f6, knight bd7, queen e2, and now g6 was played by Ilya Smirin. I'm not sure about his move. I thought he will play the move queen c7 with b5, bishop b7, bishop b7. You know, like something around this, but g6, I'm not sure. He played the move king h1. Here was an interesting move to play f4, you know, and, and trying to play e5, bishop g5, if f5 maybe, and to, to try to open um, the, the black king as... as as you know as strong as we can with white but he played a move king h1 and this was not a clever move i think because he's, he's giving time for for Ilya just to develop his pieces bishop g7 f4 now castle a4 knight c5 bishop e3 b6 makes sense because bishop b7 is the next move b4 takes takes bishop b7 a5 rook c8 i thought b5 here i don't know why he didn't play it but also rook c8 looks fine but b5 just you know push the pawn to b5 rook c8 this pawn on b4 will be weak uh, in the next future, so I don't know. Rook c8 also makes sense because you're attacking the knight and maybe the next move will be played b5. But now knight a4, you can see. So I thought my, maybe b5 and the next move will be rook c8 and this knight cannot go to a4. So let's see. Rook c8, knight a4, b takes a5. I thought also here b5, but now knight b6 is a little bit annoying here. So b takes a5, b takes, and now queen takes a5. One pawn up. But now, you know, white has some initiative here. These rooks are doing great, right, uh, in these files. And also these knights, I don't know, also this bishop, knight b6, the, the bishop on b7 is under attack. Not so easy. Queen c7, knight b6, rook b8, rook a4. Um, yeah, uh, probably in this position, black is, is totally fine here. But but let's see. Bishop takes c4, yeah. Ilyas Minon is doing it. Rook c4, rook takes b6. Another very interesting option was queen takes c4. I, I, I think maybe Ilya I forgot about this move. He played yeah, he, he played really fast. He bishop e4 after five minutes, and now he played uh, yeah in half a second, half a minute, of course, rook takes b6. Queen c4 was just an amazing move. After d takes c4, just bishop takes b1 and uh, two rooks for the queen. And also, if knight takes, just rook takes b1. So yeah, probably queen c4 was a miss uh, by Ilya, rook b6, rook c7, rook b1, rook c1, takes, take, take, and rook c8, uh, bishop e3, bishop d5, queen d2, and now a5 was played. The point here behind a5 was if queen takes, you're just playing the move knight g4, and of course this attack is just amazing. Bishop g1, just bishop d4, bishop takes, rook c1, check, bishop g1, and knight f2, checkmate on the board. So queen a5, you cannot play. He played the move h3, makes sense. a4, queen b4, now rook a8, knight b5. And he was a, a just amazing a solution for black. Bishop takes g2. And uh, this fantastic move, sacrificing the bishop, king takes g2 and now knight d5, attacking this queen and also the bishop on e3. So probably queen d2, right? This was uh, the first uh, thought of mine. But now I thought like knight takes, queen takes and a3. And you're going with the pawn and of course knight takes a3 should be the, the move. Rook takes a3 and this 
you know this position this endgame should be losing for for white because you will play the move d5 bishop f6 king g7 and slowly slowly improving these pawns will be f will fall uh, as soon as as we can get them uh, but should be winning for black but not so easy bishop c6 was play knight a3 knight e8 i'm not sure why not to play the move knight e d5 immediately because after queen d6 you have like rook c8 with double threat also knight xc3 and also bishop f8 and in this diagonal right so knight e8 was played it seems like uh, Ilya is a little bit playing passive here queen b8 and now bishop b6 of course sorry bishop d5 bishop d4 bishop h6 attacking the pawn on f4 bishop e3 coming back and now knight g7 another very strong move by Ilya bringing the knight to this a very strong square king h2 knight f5 bishop c1 rook c8 another very strong move uh, bringing all the pieces into the game and white has only three minutes on his clock bishop d2 and now bishop g7 another very strong move bringing the bishop to d4 with also maybe knight d4 you know so much uh, ideas here queen b4 was played knight bishop b3 this maybe was the, the problem i think maybe bishop d4 immediately was a very strong after queen takes a4 just rook a8 right and this position is, is very bad because the queen cannot go anywhere. Queen before just bishop c5 and taking this rook, right? Uh, this knight, sorry. But after bishop a5, I don't know, it looks very bad. Bishop c3, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I, I'm just taking uh, this this uh, bishop, right? It's winning, absolutely. So bishop b3 was a mistake. I think bishop d4 immediately bring the last uh, piece into the game. And now bishop c5, this is the threat. So after g4, for example, bishop c5, I think, with knight d4, also knight f3, rook a8, looking just amazing. Bishop b3 was played, queen b7, rook f8, and now knight b5. White is playing very uh, very active here. h5 was played, g4, bishop d5, queen b6. And now, yeah, it's not so easy to understand uh, what is the time here. Yeah, knight h4 was played, but now, you know, the best, the best move here was a3. Uh, the idea was just to promote, right? After g takes f5, just a2 and promoting a queen. So he must take it, right? But now bishop d4, you are attacking this queen. He's going back to here and knight h4 now. With knight f3. You can see it. So much things here. And black is, is just pressing with rook a8, bishop c5, knight d3, h4. So... Yeah, it's not so easy to, to look for a3, you know, like it's very complicated move, but this was the win for black. And knight h4 was played king g3, a3 now, knight takes, but now knight f3, it's not winning because bishop e3. And and yeah, the bishop is didn't came to d4 square, very important one. So rook a8, queen b4, h4, king f2, now f5 was played. Ilya Smirin trying, you know, like trying to, to win this game, uh, but maybe here... Uh, was something different to do i don't know what but maybe just play rook a6 uh, king h7 something about such moves uh, to wait for an for an action uh, yeah f5 was played g5 bishop f8 and now bishop c1 very strong move by white bring the bishop to this diagonal and this one will be not easy for Ilya. rook a7 bishop b2 rook c7 knight c4 you know white is just pressing here the d6 pawn is under attack and yeah, something went wrong. Rook b7, knight b6, king h7, queen b5. And now the queen is going to e8 and bishop is under attack. And this bishop is under attack. What can he do? Uh, after rook takes b6, of course, queen f7 check and mate in one. So yeah, he played the move e5, but queen f8, rook takes and queen e7. And Ilias Mirin resigned this position. Of course, after king g8, just queen d8 check and taking the rook. So ladies and gentlemen, we lost the last round of the Chess Olympia, the 2024 against Turkmenistan. Unfortunately, it was not a good Olympiad by our Israeli national team. And you know, for me, it's, it's, very, it's very sad because I really, really hope for the best for them. And you know, uh, they are really good friends of mine. So yeah. What can I say? It's it's tough days for for the Israeli guys, uh, but I hope uh, they will come better and and stronger. And that's it. You know, uh, the best that I can say to you that you know, the national team should be a very strong together and very good friends, uh, each of one of them. Uh, so this is what I I really hope for. Um, and that's it. So I, I really I really want to to say to you one more thing. I didn't talk about our Israeli women's uh, section in the Chess Olympiad 2024. 
so I will bring a one video about them and you know they're just doing fantastically so don't forget to smash that like button subscribe my channel for more chess content and see you soon in the Israeli women's YouTube video bye bye